Okay, this is example number 10. So, here we try to figure out the intersection between a cone and a prism whose cross section is a diamond. So, this is the profile view, this is the third angle setup, profile view, the front view, and the top view. So, I have deliberately marked these surfaces as dark lines. Ideally, I should not have done that, but nevertheless, I have done that. So, that I can distinguish between the projector lines and the surfaces clearly as I draw or as I try to or attempt to figure out the intersection between a cone and this prism. Let us look at this front view here. Is it possible for us to figure out directly where the intersection points are going to lie? By inspection possibly not. In the top view also by inspection possibly it is not easy for us to figure where the intersection points are going to lie. But if you look at the profile view the intersection points they have to lie on these two surfaces of the prism rather these three surfaces of the prism. So, once we realize that maybe we can take this profile view as our base and then whatever section points we are going to get from here we are going to be transferring those points onto the front view and onto the top view. Let us get started at this time it is important for us to you know make some basic construction and label, but before that let me summarize that there are two methods to try to find the intersection points between two solids or interpenetration points or interpenetration curves between two solids. One is the select line method and the other one is the cutting plane method. Now, over here it is obvious that the intersection points are going to be lying on these three edges. So, perhaps it is easier for us to represent the cone using a set of lines and then try to find the intersection between those lines and these edges of the prism. So, let us get started. Let me start working with the top view here and try to divide this circumference of this base of the cone into equal number of parts. So, perhaps I will be dividing this into 12 parts each or rather 12 sectors with an intermediate angle as 30 degrees. Let me ensure that my drafter is aligned properly and then my first 30 degree line is going to be of course, passing through the center I am going to be taking or I am going to be using a 2 edge pencil for that. And my second line is going to be again passing through the center at 60 degrees. So, I am using a 30 60 90 set square and try to appreciate how I am positioning my set square in such a way that I get my 30 degree angle first and then now 60 degree angle. So, I got 1 2 3 4 divisions. Likewise, on this portion of the circle, and if I want to get a sixty degree here, perhaps it is a nice idea for me to flip this over. maybe my drafter is getting locked over there. So, I will try to figure a better way to do that. Yeah, of course, a better way to do that is you know 
just take a horizontal projection from this edge, get this point there, take a horizontal projection from this point, get this point here, and then join these using a straight line that of course has to pass through the center. Now at this time it is a nice idea for us to label these 12 points on the circumference of the base of the cone. So let me label them as A, B, C, T, E, F, G, H, I, J, K and L. Let me darken these construction lines a little, so that they are you know clearly visible to you. It looks like they are now. Now, let me transfer these points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 onto this base of the cone here and this base of the cone here. Now, for that perhaps it is a nice idea for me to work with the longer side of the ruler, align that with the center line, just to make sure that is kind of vertical and start drawing the verticals from here. Let me draw all the verticals and then label the corresponding points on this space. Okay. And let me realign my drafter. Okay, so point A is going to be here. Point B and L, points B and L both are going to be here. C and K. D and J, E and I, F and H and finally point G here. This labeling is important because if we do not do that, then there are a lot of chances that we will get lost midway while we are constructing or while we are trying to locate the points of intersection. Perhaps it is a nice idea for me now to project these points horizontally onto this 45 degree line. So, maybe I will start doing that from here from C. is B. We have got A there and then L possibly I overshot by a little amount and then K here. And then let us get these points onto this space of the cone. Gem lines, you know. Perhaps a nice idea for me to realign my drafter so that the longer ruler becomes a vertical now. So make sure that I've got the vertical properly. Yeah. 
then from there we go down here up to the base of the cone from here again up to the base of the cone and finally from here maybe let me go to this center line or this this horizontal line and then from there extend this vertical okay double line there but not a problem and let me realign my drafter so that my longer ruler becomes the horizontal now while labeling these points we will have to be a little careful. So, D is coming here C and E go down here F and B here. A and G along the axis and then L and H I and K down here. finally J here. Once done and let me call this apex of the cone as point O So, once done the next step for us is to represent the surface of this cone by using what we call as the select lines or generators for that let me not worry about aligning my drafter again let me rather use my set square and very carefully join these points on the base of the cone with the apex or the vertex of the cone. So, these are called generators or select lines. got to be very careful ok and in the front view as well. there I am. So, if you now look at the profile view the intersection between this prism with the diamond as cross section and the cone will primarily be those between these generators and the three edges. Now, if you notice this vertex and this vertex these are going to be special vertices treated specially. Now, if you notice we do not have a generator passing through this vertex and likewise passing through this vertex. So, perhaps to get the intersection points correspond to this vertex and this vertex we would need additional generators and let me draw them as well in the profile view. right there and let me name them as say M and N. Likewise, let me draw another generator from here 
and let me name these two points as P and Q. Now, if you would ask me why two points M and N here and P and Q here, well, if you project this point upwards and further upwards, and then make sure that horizontal is properly aligned. Make horizontal projection. Just about there. Maybe a little more up. Perhaps here. Okay. And you know, using a set square, aligning this edge, aligning with this edge, getting a point here. So, M and N would correspond to one of these points each. So, let me name this point as M and this as N. All I'll have to do is project these points down. to this and further down to the base and let me call this M. Likewise, I project this down up to some horizontal line over there and then further down. Let me call this point as N. Now, also notice that you know there is a point of intersection between this vertical projector and the circumference of the base of the cone. Let me call this M prime so that we have M prime here. Likewise, we will have N prime here and n prime here. How about P Q? Well, the same treatment. Project this onto the circumference of the base of the cone right there. So, I got P here and I have got Q here. Project these points downward. Make sure I have my vertical line properly. Okay. Likewise, from here, Q. Let me have P here and Q here. So, too many points that we have to deal with. Okay. Now, starting from the profile view, we start figuring out the points of intersection between the cone as well as this prism. Of course, this is my first point of intersection. Let me name it as 1. This is the second one, 2, third one, 3, fourth one, 4, fifth one right there, 5, sixth one between the vertex of the pyramid or pyramidal well, vertex of the prism and this special leader here 6 and then 7 again between the vertex of this prism and the special leader, then 8, 9, 
and this one as 10. So, working with prisms uh, it is relatively easy, but if you are actually trying to figure out the intersection between a cone and a cone, then things become a little difficult. I will try to take up this example later, but for now let us focus on the intersection between this prism and the cone. So, once we have the intersection points, let us try to transfer them onto the front view and then onto the top view. The transfer has to be very, very careful. You will have to keep configuring your drafter if it is you know disturbed frequently. So, I have this horizontal well maybe there and then from point 2 got to be quite careful. Point three, point four. These lines are going to be parallel, of course, but they're going to be quite close to each other. And figuring the intersection points over here will be a little tedious. That's the reason why labeling becomes quite important. Point five. there. Well, let us start working with point 0.7 onwards. So, point 0.7 is going to be here, point 0.8 is my crafter aligned properly. Well, yeah, mm, no little adjustment just to make sure that my horizontal is all right. Yeah, and then point 0.8 perhaps there. Finally, well, not yet, 10. We still have to figure out the projection from the intersection point 6. Well, let me draw. Well, the intersection point 6 has to be lying on this line, anyways. So, I already have a part of it all right. So, there we go. Now, if you notice point 1 is going to be on leader or generator J. Okay. So, this horizontal intersecting with J, J would be here. So, this point 1. So, let me name this as point 1 here. In section point 2 will be on 2 generators i and k. So, k is this one, i is this one. So, it will be here and here. Let me name them as 2. Point 3 will be on h and l. So, going back this is generator L and generator H. So, once again going to point 3 and this would be my third intersection point at L and at H. So, let me name them as 3 just a little outside the cone intersection point 4 this is on special generator P and Q. So, I need to draw those generators in the front view as well. Okay, point 4 on Q yeah, it so happens that uh, 
point 0.4 and point 0.7 they both happen to lie on Q and P. Well point 0.4 may not be that important but anyway since we have it let me mark it anyways on P and Q. So point 0.4 would be here and here on P and Q. So let me name this number 5 this will be on B and F. So, B is the third one, got to be quite careful and F is again third from the left. So, this is intersection point 5. Okay. Point 6, this will be on special leader M and N. It is going to be lying on this line. Okay, wherever it intersects M, M would be, so I need to draw another set of select lines or generators in the front view to get point 6. So, one is here and the other one is So, back to point 6, this would be on M and N. Yeah. So, let me name them as number 6. Number 7, this would be on P and Q again. So, 7. So, this would be on the baseline of the prism and P and Q. So, P is here, Q is there. So, we have point number 7. Number 8, this will be on H and L. L is here. Okay. And H is here. Number 8, got that. Labeling is of utmost importance, otherwise, we lose the track of the sequence of these intersection points. Number 9, this will be on I and K. So, K is there, I is there. So, this is intersection point number 9 and finally, 10 will be on J. So, this is J, this is 10. So, great. So, we have a sequence of intersection points and looks like it is going to be, so they, they are kind of arranged symmetrically from the vertical and it is quite obvious because you know the intersection is going to happen on this side of, of the cone and the other side of the cone. So, that is that is one of the reasons why we have symmetric placement of these intersection points. Now, always a nice idea to use you know different mechanical gadgets. So, that we can get a smooth curve that would join these points. Let me give it a shot. So, French curves 4 at a time. Let me try to first work on the symmetric right part. And perhaps use my edge pencil to finalize this curve. Okay, and maybe flip it over, work on the left symmetric part. Well, the slope here is going to be horizontal, so it is a continuous curve. Okay, 
and then try to join these guys. Flip it so and perhaps try to join. Hmm. Maybe it's better. This is the difficult part, cuff fitting. I got this part right, seems. And if I flip it, should be getting well, let me try the inner side. It's probably not going to be looking symmetric, but perhaps I should have used that part as well over here. Well, let me erase this and see if I can do any better. You know, if you are not careful, things will probably not work out to your satisfaction. Getting these leaders or generators back, well they are not leaders, they are generators more so. Okay, I already had this point. Let me mark this as 5 and 6 back. So, I had these two points already. And perhaps let me think of joining four, five, and six through well. Maybe this this would be a better perhaps it should turn out to be symmetric. I mean let me let me try freehand, how about that? So I'll use a construction pencil. And then from 6 to 7, and then maybe let me let me join for 7, 8, 9, and 10, perhaps using the French curve. Would that that would be easier, it seems. It looks like. Looks like that would be easier. And a gentle curve. Maybe I have it. I just about have it. Okay. Maybe a little shift down. Just about there. Okay. Anyhow. Okay. From six to seven. Do um, you think we should probably have, you know, another point? in between them so that getting a curve becomes easier so how about this point perhaps so maybe let me let me call it 11 point number 11 and this would be the intersection between this vertical generator ag and this point here so let me call this 11 take horizontal projection from here we 
go and 11 would be lying on A and G. So, well close to here and here dot on the surface. So, it becomes a little easier for me to complete this part. So, this is 11 and this is again 11. Back to the use of French curves. I should not be using it, rather I should be relying on my skills to draw freehand, but it looks like, looks like I have these three points lined up or curved up pretty nicely using French curves. So, notice that uh, no, no part of the curve it should be lying outside the surface of the cone and perhaps like up likewise I could do the same thing here. Just about there yeah better yeah. So, it is going to look something like that. Okay. Perhaps, I can dock on this intersection curve offline and you will you will come to know about that. So, that things become a lot more you know clearer, but before I do that perhaps it is a nice idea for me to take the projections of all these points up over there or I could as well get the projections from the profile view onto the top view and get all these points over there. Let me go offline for a while and try to you know darken this intersection curve. Okay, so, I took a little break went offline and then using freehand I kind of drew this thick curve and then I realized one thing. You know if this prism was to be there, then this part would have been hidden and correspondingly these curves they should have been shown using dashed lines, while this part was going to be visible in the front view and therefore, this curve should have remained solid. This remains solid all right, but I had also kind of represented these three curves using thick lines. Now, what would that mean? That would mean that this curve is a result of this prism having cut the cone and the prism now is taken away. So, this is essentially solid cone minus solid prism that you would be seeing this curve all in solid in the front view. So, I will have to keep that in mind and you know to remind myself that this is actually the cut solid, solid cone I mean the prism cut from the cone. To remind myself of that what I will do is I will kind of thicken the cone surface as well. So, look pretty neat. I am going to do that later, I am going to thicken the lines later over here. I am not doing that here because I need to transfer these intersection points back on to the top view, but let me finish this line first. There I am, looks pretty ok, much in contrast. So, I will come back and darken the relevant features essentially this feature here assuming that the prism is no longer there, 
but before I need to transfer the intersection points back onto the top view. And for that, let me realign my drafter so that I have the longer ruler as my vertical. Having done that, let me quickly transfer these intersection points onto the 45 degree line. Haste makes waste. One very good friend of mine, Roger Sauer of Arvidi Haakon University came up with the Deutsch phrase, Ila mit Weile. I try to remember that often. So, I am going to slow down here and very patiently transfer all the intersection points. So, 5 of them already done, 6th, 7th is already there, sorry 11th is already there and so is 7th perhaps 8th now. Ninth, and then finally my tenth intersection point. Okay. Back to the horizontal. My first intersection point is on. J. So, it goes up from there, I mark my intersection point right there on J. And I also label that, let me darken this projector line. Let me darken this horizontal projector better. So, this is point number 1, well, right there. Number 2 goes up till there, 2 lies on I and K, generator I is there, K is there. So, in section points 2, indent that a little bit, 3 goes from here, 3 lies on H and L, just want to make sure of that. So, in section point number 3, always a good idea to label number 4 lies on PQ, so I need to have the corresponding generators joining the center of the cone and Q and P and the center of the cone. Okay. Looks like my horizontal is all right. this is going to be a little interesting. So, these are points on Q and P in section point number 4. 
number 4. Number 5 is lying on B and F. B and F. Point number five here. Number six is lying on special leader. M and N. Now for that, I need two generators joining the center and M. And center and N. And of course, point number six is going to lie here. there. Well, looks like this is not that parallel, is it? Anyhow, so let me take care of point 6 first and then get back to intersection point number 5. So, 6 is on M and the same is on N. be very careful my drafter is getting locked over there and that is the reason why I am not getting a line which is parallel which is what I expect. From here looks like I should have gotten points much lower than what I got over there. So, perhaps what I could do is I could erase this part, erase this part, make those lines again. All right, and try to relocate my intersection points number five. So it looks like they're going to be there. Well, I would just keep that in mind that these fives they get shifted. I won't bother to erase the number. And now to in section point number seven should be lying there somewhere and onto this line and point seven lies on P and Q. So this is where point seven would lie. Likewise, over here, let me name these points as 7. 3 more to go. Number 8, need a horizontal, and 8 lies on H and L. So, this would be 8. This again would be it. In section point number 9, 
goes from here and 9 lies on i and k. So, point number 9 here and here. And finally, point number 10 would lie on j. There I am. So, if you realize all these intersection points, they happen to be symmetrically placed about this vertical axis. As I said before, if you are looking at, so if you are looking at the assembly of the prism and the cone from the top, you know this part is going to be visible while this part is not going to be visible. So, this part is going to be hidden. So, if I draw a curve from 1 up till 6 is what I am going to see and from 7 onwards, okay, from 7 onwards this part is going to be below the prism. So, they are not going to be visible, but if I consider the cone or the, the, the prism having been subtracted from the cone, then this entire curve will be solid which is what the case was here. So, having transferred all the intersection points perhaps it is a nice idea for me to you know darken these lines representing the prism subtracted from the cone. will probably give you a pretty good look. First, let me work on the intersection edges. And the rest of the cone this comes out really nicely does not it. There you go. And finally, working on the top view is my intersection point 4 placed correctly is what the question is should be placed somewhere here, because if I if I project the intersection point 4 from here should be positioned over here somewhere. And if I look at point 4 it should be lying on P and Q. So, it looks like if I take it up go back yeah I, I need to be a little careful with in section point 4 lies quite close to 3, 3 seems to be all right, 4 does not seem to be ok. So, was it my drafter? Mm, let me double check. So, if I take it up over there, yeah, so looks like it was my drafter that made a mess of it. So, point 4 should be lying very close to 3 right there, right there. So, this is point number 3, this is point number 4 would not be there. And if I extend that to P, it is going to be here. So, 4 is going to be here just at the base of 3, point number 3 is there. And if I verify that pretty much get it from here number 4 pretty much get it from here also number 4 just about there just very close to 3. 
Okay, so four is not there. Four is there. Five is not here. Five is here. So having said that, maybe let me sketch this curve freehand. I'll have to get up from my stool, make way for myself. Perhaps try to sketch this freehand. I'm using multiple strokes just to get an idea. And then from 6, perhaps I should have located intersection point 11 as well. So, 11 goes, 11 lies on A and G and lies on this vertical. So, 11 would lie on A and G lies on this vertical. So, perhaps if I can project 11 from here, for that I need to realign my drafter never a good idea to disturb the drafter once it is set, but for demonstration seems should be ok. Point number 11 was here somewhere just on the cone. So, if I take a projection point number 11 will be there and from here well it will be here somewhere. Okay, let me name that in section point. I should not be using my drafter anymore, but let me name this in section point as 11, both sides, and then 6, 11, 7. then 7, 8, 9 and 10. I have to see if 8 is positioned all right. Let me realign my grafter to the horizontal. 8 was here. looks like it is positioned all right. So, perhaps perhaps it is going to come this way. Yeah, so just just to get an idea as to how the curve of intersection is going to be looking in the top view. As I said, had this prism been there, then this part would have been visible. So this part would have been visible from six up till ten all these intersection points would have been shown using hidden lines, because they were going to be below the prism in the profile view. Okay, so, having said that, but so since we are considering a solid that represents this prism subtracted from the cone, this intersection curve will be looking like a solid. Perhaps I can take a risk or maybe not. First try to 
draw this using you know thick solid lines. Slope here is going to be 0, slope here is going to be 0. And finally, I'll be using my sketch pen. Let's see how it goes. I'll try single strokes. set my drafter side a little bit. Finally, this is how the insection curve in my top view is going to look like. I would have also loved to draw this entire base of the cone using my sketch pen, so that it would have given you a very nice picture. Maybe I'll try that. I don't have a compass. Well, I have a compass, but I'm not sure if uh, I'll be able to fit the sketch pen there. Maybe I'll try that. Let's see how it looks. Should I or should I not touch the boundary of the cone? Well, this is how the entire thing is going to look like. Prism cut away from the cone. In section profile in the front view, in section profile in the top view, and the entire thing in the profile view. 